So you're a mom, you've chosen to homeschool, but you also want to work. I'm here today to let you know how you can make that happen. My name is Shauna, and if you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four. We are finishing up our seventh year of homeschooling for the 2023-2024 school year. And I am a homeschool mom who wants to work. Before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me right on down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. <sighs> Working and homeschooling. For some reason, there is a big, huge, large misconception that you cannot do both. There are many situations where you absolutely can do both. And maybe you are like me and you want to work. You do something that you absolutely love. You have found uh, a career in the world that is fulfilling to you, something you wanna keep up with. You allow yourself to have an outlet outside of just motherhood and outside of just homeschooling. Maybe you want to maintain your, you know, professional career. You may also be in a situation where your family needs you to work, where they need the income, and that is perfectly reasonable, absolutely acceptable, and honestly, uh, more and more common in this day and age of prices being crazy high, rents, mortgages being bananas high. I choose to work. I choose to work, and I say that because we would probably be perfectly fine if I never made another dime. We would have to change our lifestyle because our lifestyle is one that we've built around a dual income household. However, I am fortunate enough, privileged enough, lucky enough that we could survive on my husband's income. We choose not to. And part of that is because I choose to work. Now, if you've just started following, following me here, you may not know my background. So I am a licensed cosmetologist uh, doing hair in a salon. I was employed as a stylist and then went out and worked for myself as a stylist. And I did that through homeschooling my oldest child for probably the first year or two of homeschooling, um, something that we'd always done because I did have a job that was more retail hours, so evenings and weekends, uh, my husband and I just kind of switched off. We never had large um, like childcare situations in our home, nothing incredibly consistent. She did do Mother's Day out a few days a week, which allowed me to get in and work some daytime hours. But for the most part, it was like, uh, you know, you have to work when people are willing to come into the salon to get their services done, which is usually around their own working hours. So it tended to be a little bit more in the afternoon, evenings, and on weekends. So for us, it just kind of always worked out. We always kind of swapped off, and that is how um, how our homeschooling journey started, as I did at that time still work out of the home. Not a traditional nine to five, but there's nothing saying you can't do that. And I want to share a few practical tips to let you know how you can. Uh, so after I did decide what I actually had done, and I've, it's not the first time I've done this, what I had actually done was start my Etsy shop. So if you guys don't know, I do have an Etsy shop um, and I make right in this office that you see here and create a product that I do ship all over the country. Um, it is something I have done since I think 2015. And what happened around the time that my youngest um, was I think a year and a half, two years old. So I'm homeschooling, I'm running two businesses. So myself as a stylist and then my Etsy shop online. And I have two children at that point we really started, I really started reevaluating my place kind of in our home and just the roles that I was playing, all of the hats that I was wearing. And my Etsy business surpassed my stylist income. And so at that point, it made sense for me to just evaluate because I couldn't continue doing all of that. That was too much. So it just made sense for me at the time. This decision that we made for our family was that 
working from home would be a lot easier uh, with homeschooling and with children. And so I chose to do that. I do maintain my license so that if at any point I can change my mind. I love to have a backseat plan. We talked about that recently. Um, so at any point I can run down and get a job as fully licensed stylist because I maintain all of my credentials, all of my CE hours. I keep up with that for me because it's important to me. So at that time I had one business, the Etsy shop, homeschooling two children. And then eventually actually right before, so at the end of 2019, I had decided that I wanted to share more of our homeschool journey because nobody here sounded like me. It didn't sound like anyone else homeschooled for the same reasons I did or made similar choices to the way that I did. And it also felt there's just a general air of kind of like stuffiness surrounding any amount of homeschool sharing. Like you should be doing this, you must do that or your children are gonna fail, like ugh. And it just wasn't what I was resonating for me. And I knew that there had to be more people like me out there who needed to hear something a little different. And so that led me down the path of starting um, I started at that time this channel and corresponding website, social media presence and Suitcase Princess, which recently in the last year, I've decided to include more of that content over here and to kind of narrow down, uh, spreading myself in all the directions. Again, not the first time I've done it. So I do make content here and carry on here, which works really well because it aligns really well with what we're already doing, which is homeschooling. And I still have maintained my Etsy shop. So that is what I do. That is how I continue to work. They are both incredibly, every single career that I've mentioned that I've had is an incredibly creative outlet, which is really, really good for me. Um, all of them are very flexible. I have not in so many years, I don't even know how many years, uh, so many years. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the math. I'm just not gonna do it to myself, okay? We have enough math coming up this year with turning 40. I'm not doing this math. I have been self-employed for a very long time. And I do believe that that plays well into figuring out how to work and homeschool. So moral of the story, I do not care how you got to now. If you want to work, if you need to work, it can be helpful to hear how other homeschooling families have made that work. Now, it is a little bit unfair and quite privileged of me to come here and um, tell you any of this because again, I made up jobs that people pay me for and I can do them from home. It's not the same. I understand that that right there honestly probably keeps me from resonating with most of you. And I'm sorry, but this is my genuine and real experience. And there are things here that I know could be helpful. And again, at one time I did work out of this, out of my house. Um, I just figured out a way to make it work for us, for our family in the house. And I want to keep doing it. So I wanted to come here and there's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no mom judgment. If you want to keep your career, there's no mom judgment. If you want to continue working, there's no mom judgment. If you just want to go be a barista on the corner for 40 hours a week, that is great. And I fully support that for you. I want everybody to do what fills them up. I do have a video on cup size which it might be time to discuss that again, but basically my cup can only ever fit two children. That's as many children as I can fit in my cup, but I make space in my cup for working. I do not have space in my cup for a dog. That's not a level of commitment I want to have, but I do have guinea pigs. It is all about you and your cup size and everyone's cup size is entirely different. This is what fits comfortably in mine. So please, Take all of this with a grain of salt, because again, I know that your circumstance is very unlikely to be similar to mine. However, I do feel like I have some things that I can share, some things of value to share. Um, also, and let me throw this out there pretty early. It is okay if you have decided you are going to quit your job, you're not going to work at all, you're going to be a stay-at-home mom and homeschool. Great, w love that, wonderful for you, love it. It is okay if you made that choice and then realized that that's not the right choice. That's okay too, okay? It is okay if you are choosing to go back and, and pursue a professional life as opposed to homeschooling your kids, that is okay too. There is no judgment here. This is about what happens when you wanna do both. And these are a few tips that I can offer to hopefully help everybody have a little bit easier time doing that. Okay, so these are the five things that I feel like have uh, keep me 
being able to both work and homeschool without drowning in either work or homeschool. The number one thing is priorities. Now, I tell you all the time you need to know your why. You need to know your why for this too. What are your priorities? The way that I have looked at it, because I do choose to work, I do identify at the beginning of every week the things that I need to do for my business in an effort to stay consistent, but also to give myself a little bit of kind of look ahead. What's next? How am I working for the future? How am I growing? Absolutely. However, in our home, we have decided that our priority is our homeschool. So if I had to sacrifice one for the other, I would sacrifice work and professionalism for my homeschool. Fortunately, that has never been the case, but I know where my priority is. If you have something that's not as flexible, something that is, you know, you have to work this many hours, if you can plan for that, you absolutely are going to find success. You just need to know what your priorities are. Everyone's priorities are going to be different. Number two is time management. Now, I know that this is something that has served me well. Being a stylist, you really need to know. It takes me this much time to get this on, this much time to do something in the middle, this much time to run in the back and eat lunch, this much time to do the taxes, this much time, this much time, this much time. I think something that helps me immensely in my homeschool, and I talk about it all the time, um, and I will be speaking on it soon at a convention, is time management. Time management is absolutely crucial. If you do know that you have a hard nine to 12 commitment where you have got to be in your office working on your professional life, then you're going to need to know where does homeschool fit in that. Homeschool can fit in from, you know, one to four, one to five, whatever it is. So as long as you are paying close attention to managing your time and focus in on those things that really do matter. So, you know, make time for your work and your commitments there, absolutely. Make time for your homeschool, make time for yourself because you're doing a lot. Cooking, cleaning, all of the things, manage your time wisely and that's gonna be an absolute key in helping to make sure that you can do both. Now, number three for me is expectations and accountability. Because I work, there are often times that I have said the phrase, you know, we need to figure out what's for dinner next week. We need to get the food plan. That's not my job. It's something I do in service to my family, absolutely. However, it is not my job. I have a job. So it is important that we are working together and I am holding all of the people in my home accountable for their roles as well because that is not my job. I have a job. Okay, I do earn money somewhere else outside of the home. So these are things that while I do them because I love my family and it is something that helps my home run smoothly, I have absolutely no problem reminding everyone in my house that these things are not my job. So we, I'm holding everyone accountable, including myself, to get the things done that need to be done so that our home can run smoothly. But it's not my job. Accountability is absolutely key. You must use your self-awareness and know that you are staying on the things you need to stay on. You're, you're juggling a lot of balls. You have a lot of plates in the air. And so holding yourself accountable, but also holding your entire family accountable is really important. So knowing that your kids can do a few things independently so that you don't have to be over them the entire time. Uh, making sure that the groceries get ordered and the meals get thought of and everybody gets where they need to go is a group effort in my house. And that brings us to number four, know when to seek help and accept it. It is very important that you know when you need to outsource something. There have been many times, not currently, but many times when I am drowning and I cannot get to cleaning the house because if I am listing my, my priorities, it is kids, family, homeschool, work. It is myself. Cleaning my house always gets to the bottom of the list. It is more important to me to keep everyone fed, educated, and happy than it is to clean my house. And so in those seasons of my life, we hire outside help because that is what we need. So it is so important to know when to seek help, but also to accept it. And that means making sure that you are letting your spouse and your children help out with chores, even if they don't do it the way that you would do it. You have to relinquish control and allow for help. You can do 
absolutely everything in this whole world that you want to do. I believe in you, but you cannot do it all. Okay. You can do as much as you want, but it will never be all. So seek out help when you need it and accept it when it is offered. Okay. It is a very important thing to do. I struggle with that second part all the time. Now, number five, number five is to be flexible. Now, what does that mean? That means if I know I have to work nine to five every single day, homeschool happens in the evenings and on the weekends, and that's okay because it is flexible and it will bend to what you want. I am fortunate. My work environment is flexible. So very rarely do I have any hard and fast deadlines. Uh, I, I will package orders on the weekend. My husband and kids will help me make my packaging. I am doing things as I need to in order of urgency or importance. And so my work life is very flexible. If you are fortunate enough, and in this day and age, a lot more work situations are pretty gosh darn flexible. If you are in a position where you can have some of that flexibility, by all means, take advantage of it. Uh, but what I am saying is that homeschool affords freedom and flexibility. And so it is possible to do both. You just have to figure out how, and all of this, you're going to have to plan for. So all of these five steps, you will have to figure out how, but as a success story, I feel like I want to come and tell you, you absolutely can work and homeschool, especially, especially if you need to, especially if you want or are choosing to, it's okay if you're not. But if you want to, it's possible. It's not as hard as you might think it is. It's just going to take a little bit of planning, knowing your priorities, some good time management, some good accountability and expectations, knowing uh, when to get help if you need it. it. And maybe that's outsourcing some of the schooling and that's okay too, two day a week, three day a week, just some hard classes. And then of course, staying flexible so that you can keep all your balls and all your plates in the air. I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me right on down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. I am hoping that some of you will share if you do both. Maybe if you can let us know if you do work in homeschool, if your work is traditional, Unlike mine, if you're self-employed, how are you doing both? Please share because it's an absolute wealth of information. So many moms want to be able to, and we all do absolutely provide for our families, but so many more of us want to be involved or increasingly need to be involved in earning an income. So how are you doing that? What beacon of light can you give to other moms who also want to know? Because I know that my situation is uncommon, but maybe one of yours is more common. Thanks guys, bye.